Hi everyone and welcome back to a new intermediate Spring Boot video. Today we're going to take a standard Spring Boot application. We're going to see how to package it as a WAR file and then we will deploy that WAR file to a dedicated Tomcat server. All the source code that you're going to see in this app will be available on GitHub. You can find the link in the description of this video. Before we get started, there are two prerequisites for this video. I assume that you have at least a minimal understanding of Tomcat and how to deploy applications to Tomcat. And I also assume that you have a basic knowledge of Spring Boot. Now, if you're new to Spring Boot, then this video might not be uh, the best one to get started. I have a Spring Boot 101 series where I cover the fundamentals of Spring Boot. As for Tomcat, you know, there are plenty of resources on the net to get you up and going. But if you have uh, this minimal experience, then you can hang along and check out this video. Normally, a Spring Boot application is packaged as a jar file. It is self-executable and has an embedded container which is used to bootstrap and host the web application. Embedded containers are cool. They enable developers to test and develop their applications without installing uh, separate containers like Tomcat or Giddy or something like this. It also streamlines the continuous integration process because again, you don't have to take care of this extra dependency, which is the web server. Now, you might be wondering if embedded containers are so good, why would we ever want to deploy our Spring Boot application on a dedicated server? And the answer to this is quite simple, because your customer wants it. Think about it. Your customer probably has an IT landscape with dedicated servers. Your customer probably has um, DevOps teams which handle those servers, which have fine-tuned those servers to meet the company's requirements. It's also a matter of security. Again, different companies have various security policies and it's easier for them to impose those policies into their dedicated servers. Now, in this scenario, um, delivering a jar file is not good enough. Your customer will probably want you to give him a WAR file, which the DevOps team can then take and deploy in their dedicated landscape. One thing that I want you to know is that there is nothing wrong with deploying a Spring Boot application to an existing server. It's just another way of deploying an application. You can do it, you can create a self-executing jar or you can create a WAR file which can then be deployed in a Tomcat or Getty instance. Luckily for us, making this transition, transforming a default Spring Boot application to be deployable as a WAR file is very, very easy. And we'll see that in the following steps. We'll start this tutorial by looking at an existing Spring Boot application. I will use a simple application that manages hotel bookings. Let's check it out. I go to Chrome, I type localhost 8082, and I have a simple page with a list of hotels, the price per night. I can display only the hotels that cost less than 100 bucks or all the hotels, and I can delete some hotels. Okay, so pretty basic functionality. Uh, this is how the application works and we need to know that because we'll test the behavior once we deploy the application on Tomcat. Now, the internals of the application are not mandatory. You don't have to know how this application was built. However, you will have access to the source code. You'll find it on GitHub and you can um, look at the link in the description of this video. For those of you who have watched the Spring Boot 101 series, this is the exact application I'm, I'm using right now. So you'll be familiar with this app. But it's pretty basic stuff. It's a standard Spring Boot application. Uh, we have a simple entity called, you know, hotel booking with basic properties like hotel name, price per night, and, you know, how many nights the booking has. Um, we have a database header, which is a command line runner. And when we start the application, it automatically inserts the free hotels that you saw in the, in the index page. I'm using H2, an embedded SQL database. 
and we have a booking controller which is a standard Spring Boot REST controller with some GET and POST mappings to you know perform some basic CRUD operations. Again, pretty standard stuff. We don't we don't have to go too deep in this tutorial because uh, this is not the focus uh, today. Okay, now that I've showed you uh, the application, let's begin to transform it so we can deploy it as a WAR file. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make some modifications to the POM file. So we can open our POM file and the first thing that we need to change is the packaging. Like I told you, this was a standard Spring Boot application, so the packaging was jar. Now, because you want to create a deployable WAR file, we need to change the packaging from jar to WAR. Step number two involves removing the embedded Tomcat container from this application. By default, when you create a Spring Boot application, Tomcat, the Tomcat container is built in. So it's in the jar file that you ultimately produce. And we need to exclude it because otherwise, when we take um, our application and deploy it to an actual container, it will cause conflicts. The embedded container will conflict with the actual Tomcat instance. And one way we can do this is we create a dependency. Uh, it's called Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. Okay. And we need to change the scope of this dependency. And we'll add in a provided scope. Now, what does this mean? A normal dependency is going to be included in the class path of your application. It can be found by looking at the jar that you are deploying. When you mark a dependency as provided, this is no longer the case. Instead, at runtime, a different component like the JDK or a different container will include this dependency, will add this dependency. And when we mark Tomcat, the embedded Tomcat containers provided, it will no longer be part of the WAR file that will deploy on a different server. So we escape, uh, we get rid of all the potential conflicts that can arise, but at the same time, our WAR file will still be self-executable because we are not eliminating this dependency completely. Rather, when we will execute our application with you know, Java jar and application.war, then the embedded Tomcat container can be still provided. So by doing this, we achieve a sort of duality. Uh, we package our application as a WAR file, and then we can choose. We can either deploy it to a dedicated server, or we can execute it as before. But this time it will not have a JAR extension, we have a WAR extension. But this approach allows us to execute our application in two different ways. And I think this is really, really cool because we do not lose all the nice benefits that we get with self-executing web apps. Step number three, which is the final step, involves making a small change to the main class of your Spring Boot application. In my case, this is the booking demo application. The main class is the class that is annotated with at Spring Boot application. In order to make our app work um, in a standard container, so in order to make it deployable to Tomcat or to any other container for that matter, we need to extend the Spring Boot servlet initializer. Spring Boot, okay. And we need to override the configure method. So we have the configure method and in the configure me method we can return its builder sources and we need to add our main application class. So it's Spring Boot, it's booking demo application dot class. Okay, with this modification in place, our application is ready to be deployed to Tomcat as a WAR file. In order to produce the artifact, we need to run Maven package. So I opened my Maven window, I execute the package goal, and if all goes well, at the end of this process, I should get the uh, artifact for this app, which should be a WAR application, a WAR file. Okay, 
competed with success, I'll go to, I'll show this folder in Explorer and in target you can see that we have a WAR file. Now we also have the JAR file because up until now this application was you know, packaged as JAR so uh, nobody removed it but after we made all these modifications we fired the package goal and now we have a WAR file that is ready to be deployed under Tomcat. To deploy our app we need to open our Tomcat app manager. I already installed a Tomcat server which is listening on localhost 8080 and I'm greeted with the you know familiar Tomcat interface. I can now go to manager app and it's the default page I didn't uh, deploy any applications and now we can go here to work files to deploy we can pick the WAR file that we just generated, which is this one, and then we can click deploy. And if all goes well, our application should be deployed under Tomcat. Now, um, I assume that you have at least some basic um, acquaintance with Tomcat because I will not go in detail uh, on the process of you know how to install and deploy applications on Tomcat. I assume that you have at least some basic experience with it. Okay, and everything seems to be okay. Our application has been uploaded to Tomcat and it has been started and it's running. Before we conclude this video, I want to show you a couple of issues that might occur when you uh, transform a default Spring Boot application to a WAR uh, deployable Spring Boot application. The first thing that you need to pay attention to is the URL of your application. Uh, when we started uh, the presentation, I showed you the standard Spring Boot app, which ran on localhost 8082. And that combination, the port, for example, was given from the application properties file. Here we have server port 8082. However, the application properties file can become misleading once you deploy your application to a dedicated container because the properties for the server object for example are applied only when you are using an embedded container. Uh, in this case because I deployed my application on, um, on a separate instance of Tomcat these properties will not be applied so my application will definitely not run on port 8082 instead it will run on the port where Tomcat has been installed. In our case, this is 8080. Now, I just want to highlight that these properties can be a little misleading. So be aware that the server properties are applied only when you execute your application with the embedded container. Okay, so to prove the point, if I go to, sorry, if I go to localhost 8080, nothing will happen. There is nobody listening there. Let's change the port. So I have a Tomcat instance running on port 8080. Let's type localhost 8080. And wow, we're greeted with the standard Tomcat page. That's because when we deploy applications in Tomcat, they are no longer, you know, accessible in the root, uh, using a root context, you know. So the base path for, uh, for our apps is the IP address, the port number, and then this name, this folder name that you have here. So in order to access our application, we need to append the name of our app, which is not very good looking, but this is it. And we type enter and now, you know, we get our application. The next thing that I would like to change is the name, is, is the base path of our app because right now it's localhost 8080 and then we have this ugly looking name right here. That's because when we deploy applications on Tomcat, they are deployed in a folder and the name of that folder is the name of the WAR file and that's why we have our application deployed here. But this is pretty ugly and one way to change it is by modifying the pom.xml file. We can go to the build section and we can add this property here. We can add final name and we can give a name to our 
uh, to our application, which means that once I hit package, our application, the artifact um, name will be booking app dot war instead of using the name of the, ar the artifact ID and the artifact version. Okay, everything was successful. Okay, now if I go to Tomcat, okay, I can undeploy this application. And now I can choose the file. I have booking app dot war open. I want to deploy it. And I should see my app in a couple of seconds. Okay, so we have our application and this means that, you know, instead of writing this, I can say localhost 8080 booking app. And um, you can agree that it's a lot better. It looks a lot better, but our hotels are not displayed anymore. So something is not working. Let's hit F12 and see the problem. And now we have an error here saying fail to load resource because uh, we try to do an Ajax request to localhost 8080 booking demo 001 snapshot bookings all. We This application actually has a booking controller and we are trying to access this method to retrieve all the bookings. And we are doing that in an Angular JS script. For example, here. Now, before I change the name, the links were, you know, uh, were appropriate for uh, booking demo 001 snapshot. Now that I've changed the name, I also need to come here and change the links um, to that REST API. So I have to modify them with booking app. Of course, this is not you know, an elegant solution. I would certainly not encourage you to hard code your base path in, uh, in production applications. But for the point of this video, it should be just okay. Uh, in production, what I would recommend you to do is the base path of your app. So the IP address, the port and the base segment, uh, you should probably have them configurable either in the application properties or at least maybe in, a, in JavaScript you can create a small properties file where you have to provide the base path because otherwise you run into problems like the one that I've just shown you. Okay, so I made this modification. I will repackage my application, redeploy it to Tomcat and everything should now work. So, okay, build succeeded. I'll go to Tomcat. I will undeploy this version because it obviously does not work. Okay, I will delete the WAR files from here and I'll go to target, to the target folder to get the new artifact. And it should be bookingapp.war. This is the newest one. I copy it. I put it here to make things a little bit easier for me. And now I will redeploy this app and I will navigate to it again. Okay, and if we navigate here, the localhost 8080 booking app. Now we have the hotel names because I've changed the URLs for the Ajax calls and now they target, you know, this request targets the correct URL. So uh, it's a minor issue, but you need, you really need to, um, uh, to think about it. If you want to deploy applications to Tomcat, the base path, the base URL, you need to have some way to configure that in order uh, to not, uh, you know, navigate through all your files and change it once you want to change the folder or the name of your application. 
I want to show you something really cool about Spring Boot apps. I've just published my application to Tomcat, you know, I took the Word file and I uploaded it in the Tomcat using the um, Web Application Manager. But at the same time, uh, my Spring Boot application is still self-executable, which means I can still launch it using the, using the embedded container and the Java jar command. Let's see how that works. So I will stop my application from Tomcat. Okay. Uh, it's not mandatory, but you know, just to start from a clean slate. And I will navigate to my uh, target folder where I have the WAR file. And I'll say Java jar, and it's called booking app.war. I'll hit enter, and my application starts. So even though I have converted my application to be packaged as a WAR file, it is still self-executable. Remember that you marked the Tomcat container to be provided, a provided dependency. So when you actually start your application using the Java jar command, the embedded Tomcat container is provided to your application. And my app started on localhost 8082 because we have the embedded container and that means that all the server properties are now being applied. So my app is not running on 8080, but it's running on localhost 8082 because you're using the embedded container. And if I want to check it out, I can go to localhost 8082, hit enter, and I should see my application. Here it is. But again, I have no hotels. Do you know why? Well, it's the same problem that we had before. We have a 404 error because in JavaScript, I hard coded all the URLs that point to my REST controllers. Now, in order to make this work, I would have to go to my JavaScript file and modify this URL again, but I will not do that. I wanted to point out the duality of this approach. You can actually package Spring Boot applications to WAR and then you have two options. You can either deploy them to Tomcat or you can execute them using the Java jar command. You have to pay attention to the application properties because the server properties are applied only when using an embedded container. And you also have to pay a lot of attention to the base path of your app. Ideally, you need to make it configurable because otherwise you'll run into this kind of problems. But if you take care of these problems, then you'll have a Spring Boot application that, you know, you can deploy it however you like and you will uh, you, you can use the um, exec the self executable approach for development and continuous integration which will help you as a web developer and then you can provide uh, the WAR file for a devops team which can then you know install it to your customer under a dedicated server and this kind of flexibility is what makes spring boot so powerful there is one more issue that I would like to highlight. This time it has to do with IntelliJ. Uh, I've just showed you that, you know, I can execute my application by using Java jar and then uh, to point the path to my WAR file and my application worked. However, if I try to achieve this, so I have the um, running configuration from my Spring Boot app. And if I try to run my application using this one, uh, using this running configuration, it will not work. I will get an error. So my application will appear to work and then I'll have some, some errors here, some configuration issue. Um, so uh, a pretty nasty error, which um, I didn't exactly know how to solve, but it turns out that it has something to do with the conventions that are built in this running configuration. So when you actually, um, add a Spring Boot running configuration, your application ideally should be packaged as a jar file. Now, it's not a big deal, it's just an ID thing, and you can easily accommodate for this. You can create a new running configuration, but instead of using Spring Boot, you can choose a jar application. Now, I can point, um, I can point to my booking app.war, so is the is the artifact that we produced. And now, just before we uh, launch 
this application, we have to do we have to run a Maven goal, which is the goal is package. Okay, I can say this. I can name this run war. Hit apply, and now when I when I will click on this uh, running configuration, the first thing that will happen is the Maven package goal will be executed, and I will have a new war artifact in my target folder, and then using that artifact, it will run it using the Java jar command. So it's what I did manually, but you know more automated. And now let's clear the console. I can hit run or debug for that matter. So th this approach will work with running debug with absolutely no problems. And now our application will actually run. So the Maven package has been completed and now the Spring Boot application is booting. Okay. And okay, Tomcat started on port 82 and we have no errors. So there is a problem with the Spring Boot running configuration once you package your application as a WAR file. I don't know if it just happens to me or I don't know if it's uh, if there is a more elegant solution to this, but uh, the way I solve the problem is by changing my running configuration to this one. And now, of course, if I go to localhost 8082, you know, my application still runs and I can debug it. I can do all the things that I could have done before. Again, um, it, just, it might be, a, you know, an issue on my machine, but I wanted to highlight it in case it also happens to you. Let's make a small recap be before we finish. If you want to package your Spring Boot application as a WAR file and deploy it to Tomcat, you need to do the following things. First, you need to change the application packaging in your pom.xml file. Then, you need to mark the embedded Tomcat container dependency as provided. After that, you need to go to your Spring Boot application class and extend the Spring Boot servlet initializer. You will have to override the configure method and then you are set to go. Before you deploy it, please take care of your base path. Make sure that it is configurable and pay attention to it. And also pay attention to the application properties because when you deploy your application to Tomcat or to any other standalone container, the server properties are no longer interpreted. This concludes today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and don't forget to share it with your friends. You can find more software development tutorials on my blog at www.romaniancoder.com and you can also find me on Facebook at Romanian Coder. Have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.